Okay, AP Physics C, are you ready? Just a couple things on um, two-dimensional motion to help you with these problems, a little more advanced problems. So um, my computer is dead, and I don't have the packet here at home. So I'm going to look at one very similar to that number three on the worksheet, where we have something that's moving and accelerating, right, in one direction. But then another force comes along and starts to blow it off its track with an acceleration this way. So I kind of think of like drawing a motion map of it where let's say we have something that's kind of speeding up this way, right? Straight line motion. Let's just say its acceleration is, we'll say AX is positive 2 meters per second squared. All right, let's say V naught X is 0. Um, and let's say, let's make it one, two, three, four seconds of motion. T is four seconds. All right, but now let's say a gust of wind comes along, right? And it starts accelerating it vertically as it moves. But, so I think about the component of the velocity, right? Increasing this way as well, but maybe at a lower rate. So now actual motion of this object would actually look like this, right? This is what it looks like in the x-direction. In the y-direction, right, it's getting faster, it's getting faster, it's getting faster in the y-direction up this way. So overall, I, I have a path that looks kind of like that, right? So I have to kind of think about drawing this a little bit differently. All right, um, I got a little too wild with my arrows here. Let me make it increase at a lower rate in the y direction. So here's the initial path, but now we also have velocity in each direction, right? And the resultant would be tangent to this curve, would be the resultant of these vectors I drew. So Let's say a y equals positive 0 0.25 meters per second squared. Um, v naught y equals 0. And still the time equals 4 seconds. So ultimately one would want to, would want to figure out here, okay, in those 4 seconds, how far does it displace itself to the right and how far does it displace itself that way? So it's no different than what we've been doing. We break it in x and y direction, but what's different now is that we can't just take for granted that its acceleration in the x direction is zero and its acceleration in the y direction is positive 9.8. This could be a sailboat. This could be a boat going in water that's also moving this way. This could be like a river where the water's flowing this way and the boat's trying to cross, but it's going that way. Um, it's, I don't know. This could be air something moving through a fluid that's moving. Anyway, something that has two perpendicular jets. So when you travel in space, you would have a jet pushing you forward and jet pushing you this way, and that would give you this curved path, right? Um, so if we go ahead and figure out delta x and delta y. So delta x equals one half of two times four squared plus v naught t, which is zero, so 16. Delta x would be positive 16 meters. Delta y, delta y, one half of 0 0.25 times four squared, so 16. Quarter of 16 is four, half of six, half of four is two, so delta y would be plus two meters. So we have two components the acceleration and we still keep track of them separately um, if we want to find the resultant displacement right which hmm, we need a variable for the resultant displacement right uh, so sometimes what we'll say is Delta R the overall displacement where R is like R would be a vector drawn from the first point right this would be the R vector the position vector R vector and it is worthwhile to think about making these vector quantities at this point. 
right? So we can keep it's the displacement in the x direction, it's displacement in the y direction. Really thinking these of these as vectors. We add that little arrow over the x and the y, and that turns it into what we call a vector quantity. There'll be a little more on this later on, but the the r vector, let me draw it in a different color. The r vector, the well, I should say the delta r vector would be the displacement vector. That'd be the vector from where it started straight to where it finished. Right? That would be the displacement vector. Its position would be, you know, specific x and y coordinate, which makes sense written in a little different notation that we'll um, find out later on. Now, uh, Really, I want the magnitude of that vector, the magnitude of that vector, the angle I'd have to figure out. So the magnitude of the r vector is square root of 16 squared plus 2 squared, which, uh, as usual, I don't have a calculator down here. i got to get set up better back down here for these, for these videos. Um, if I then wanted to figure out the angle, it's at theta. It's the tan inverse. Theta equals the tan inverse opposite over adjacent of the y over x, which would be 2 over 16. You get the angle that way. So I'd have to go about that. Um, really, the whole point here is you could have any wacky, crazy acceleration, right, in either direction, and you'd have to figure it out. Now, keeping track of things i could make it a function as well i could i could say okay you know what the velocity in the x direction is 3t plus 9 the velocity in the y direction is simply 10 and this would give you units of meters per second okay so that means the acceleration of this one is the derivative of velocity so it would be 3 meters per second squared this would have to have units of meters per second. This would be meters per second. Acceleration of y direction would be zero, right? Because this is a flat function, zero acceleration. I could ask you the displacement over each direction, right? I can ask you for the magnitude of the resultant acceleration. I could ask you for the magnitude of the resultant velocity at specific times, right? We could figure that out. That's all Pythagorean's theorem, right? So. I would have the velocity here is changing in each direction. Um, but again, the whole point is, it's really no different than what we've been doing. You just have to keep track of the x direction and the y direction simultaneously, separately, and then recombine them together with things like, well, the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is equal to the square root of the components squared. The magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the square root of the components ax squared. All right. Now, displacement is the weird one, right? Vx, we use subscripts to notate the other directions. With displace, with um, the displacement, magnitude that, we, we like to use the delta r and then we have to, we wouldn't say Rx and Ry, we would just say x squared plus y squared, right? So that's a little different the way we notate position and displacement, which, you know, is just kind of the way we do it. Um, so I hope that'll help you figure out that number three, kind of also simultaneously, it's a little bit of an introduction to the next worksheet, which we'll get going on. Um, you know, just wanted to quick get something out there quick so I could you could wrap up that worksheet one and maybe think about uh we'll be starting probably worksheet two next week. All right, so have a good one. Talk to you later.